Hello everyone. Today I'm speaking with Yassim Dakawi from Morocco. In the past, he has struggled with a life of drugs, depression, the theft of his business, and a heavy, heavy heartache. With the help of a brain stimulation program, he now holds two world records and he fills his life with passion, excitement, and service to others. He's refined and customized this brain entrainment technology for his clients and, and he assists them to step out of their dark depths and into self-empowerment. This is very powerful stuff and, and it's easy to use. You could find a sample of it, like an introductory version of this technology on Karma Hub. And if you like it, you can of course connect to him directly also through Karma Hub. I really connected to Yassim's sincerity and his authenticity. Maybe you will feel the same when you listen to this discussion. I hope you enjoy it. Like binaural bits, what you do, you take the whole brain to create the state. But with isoproductons, with what I use, with isoproductons, I can target each hemisphere in a very different way. First, with binaural bits, you cannot do that. And then the reaction of the brain, the brain reacts. The, the reaction is much stronger with isochronic tones than with binaural beats. For me, a best client if someone who wanna, is someone who wanna go like as deep as possible because I like to see real results. And that happiness is possible. That state we imagine, or maybe we cannot imagine when, when we don't get it, exists. A, spa, a state of permanent amazement exists. And it's sad to see that so many lives are wasted. So guys, test different things. Beauty and happiness is waiting for you. That's your true nature. Just take action. Take action and test in life. And don't be scared to get hurt. Get hurt, man. Come on. Jump from the cliff. Get hurt. Your bones will get stronger. And then you will start to enjoy the pain. So you have a master's in yeah. computer science. You have um, a, a background in, in freedom technology, or it's a psychology, uh, a type of psychology. Uh, you hold two world sailing records um, by, by sailing uh, small boats, lasers specifically. I own a laser myself, so that's so cool. We definitely connect in, in that way. Um, and so you now work with sound modulation, brain entrainment, um, it, it's kind of a brain stimulation by creating different programs and, and using sounds to um, I kind of help guide the brain in, in different ways that we're going to discuss today. Um, so I, I just think that that's so cool that you've been able to kind of get your computer science background and merge it with this almost like a, a psychology technology um, to help people out with all sorts of stuff, depression, um, ailments, um, anxiety. I mean, the list is, is huge and we'll talk a bit more about that as well. How did you, how did you get here? Why, why are you doing this? Uh, the, the first time I, uh, I heard about brain stimulation was maybe around 20 years ago. At the time I had the depression and uh, a friend gave me a couple of CDs and said, okay, man, try this and see what will happen, it can help you, because normal treatments didn't help me. Anyways, I tried the sound, I felt amazing for one week, and then I gave up in it. You know, but at the time I wasn't into healing myself. Gotcha. Actually, that's part of depression, we don't care about uh, uh, Well, but the thing hit me like deep. I saw how sound can, can do like crazy things. Five years ago, so now, we we are like five years ago. I'm in Thailand. I have a business. I have a very beautiful life. I through my business for the first time uh, I saw how I could create big things because I was designing and, and building flying boats and I started from scratch. So that was a really beautiful experience. I saw how like a hydrofoil type everyone, boat. Yeah, I designed a moth, a flying moth. So, you know, it was a lot of work. It was, it was, it came from my heart. That's why I, I gave everything for two years. And after that, one day, when going back to the workshop, I uh, found that they changed the, the locker. 
I started to ask, okay, what's going wrong? What's happening? Well, just to resume it, my company got stolen. So my name, my shares, everything I had, bye-bye. Oh, wow. Two weeks after wow. that, I had uh, another like emotional problem, divorce. So, you know, uh, it was a very painful experience. And uh, I said, okay, I have to find a way to stand up quickly, to bounce back. I don't want to stay in this state because life is, is moving and I don't want to be like depressed or sad. So let's try frequencies again. And already I had in mind to create something based on that because I found some gaps and flows in the market. So this is how it started. It was a journey to heal myself. And I said, okay, if I can heal myself and combine my knowledge, my skills, maybe I can create something for others. And if they are in similar situation, meaning they lose someone, they lose something, they can recover faster than ever than with most of the other techniques. So it's how it started. And well, it was you know, a lot of learning. I, I, I'm sorry to hear about your, your business and of course the, the divorce, but I, I will say it's, I'm very happy that you're now following this track that you are on right now, because I feel like in my heart, this is making a, uh, you know, what, what you're doing with this, this program of yours is affecting people for the better in a much more uh, real way. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very positive uh, impact that you're, you're creating. Um, you know, you sent me a couple you know, of samples and, and it really was, it was out of this world. I really loved it. It was fantastic. And, um, you know, I understand that you kind of custom make uh, different programs for different people and their needs. And, you know, and, and I know, I know a little bit about the idea of the technology and it really makes, it can make a huge difference. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm excited to dive deeper into what this is all about, but, but thank you for doing what you're doing. Um, you know, you're making a huge difference. Thank you for liking it. Yeah. yeah. We, you know, a, a breakthrough happened when I was building boats, a moth is a $30,000 little boat. So basically I was targeting like a very small group of people, but I was looking for something to target people's souls, you know, because I'm aware how the world is going now. Right. And I know that, you know, many of the, or maybe all the problems are coming from here. We lack thinking skills and we don't align ourselves. I mean, emotions say something, the reason says something else, and it's chaotic and someone else will make profit on that mess. <clears throat> So I was looking for a project that could help people change their perception of things and become more, maybe more mature, happier, more creative, because, you know, change starts with one person. Well, I think and you've done it. <laughs> you found that thing that will create change in people. So that's why I also switched to this project. And uh, the breakthrough came when I was waiting for a wave. I was surfing at the time. Look, when I lost my company in, in Thailand, they treated me with prison. You know, they wanted to get my designs, the passwords, the, all that stuff. So um, it wasn't my home anymore. I was kind of, it was risky to stay there. So I found myself just in a remote island in Indonesia where I spent three months. And uh, that's where I started to study about, well, about frequencies in depth. And one day I was surfing alone, waiting for wave to come. It was flat for 10 minutes. And suddenly I saw a monster coming from nowhere. It was very scary. Behind me was a cliff with sharp rocks and a huge wave coming. Oh, wow. And in that moment of panic, wow. Okay, this is what you have to do. Okay, I don't like to say, okay, it came from somewhere else, but it came from my subconscious. Okay, this is the project where you will find yourself. Right. Find all that stuff. It's going to be tough, difficult to understand how it works and create something beautiful, but do it. And I started doing it. So you're, you're basically um, kind of tapping into a technology that, that's been around for a long time. Uh, I have it here in my notes here that it's been around for 85 years, uh, you know, in research. Um, mm. And, you know, I, I'm familiar with some of the more like basic programs that you might find on like YouTube, like binaural beats. And I've always been fascinated by them. Um, yours was very different for me than binaural beats um 
it, it just took me in a lot deeper. And what, what you do, what um, sets you aside from like binaural beats or some of the other uh, programs like that? What exactly do you do? I know you're kind of custom fit programs for people after you discuss issues and where you want to go. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, like, you know, binaural beats have been like for decades now in the market and uh, they have their limitations. Yeah, like binaural beats, what you do, you take the whole brain to create the state. But with isochronictons, with what I use, and by the way, they have been discovered in 92, with isochronictons, I can target each hemisphere in a very different way. First, with binaural beats, you cannot do that. And then the reaction of the brain, the brain reacts the, the reaction is much stronger with isochronic tones than with binaural beats. And there is something else, you know, now that I started to mix and understand about the topic, I see that a lot of people promise things, but it's not that powerful as, you know, the claim and the reality, well, there is a difference. And that's something I wanted to kind of, okay, let's correct things. Let's create something which will be like better. So I observed what the others did and I came with my own approach using isoprotons. And there is something else is that I studied a lot about voices and about consciousness. And all that knowledge I got about consciousness, about the language, how consciousness is you now like the virtual space we create here in our minds we call reality. I spent a lot of time studying all of that. And it helps me design programs. So my approach is not okay talking about the past or no, my approach is about targeting those voices and we keep only one, which is the real eye. And with frequencies, I can do that. So I combine also these kind of skills with my knowledge of each frequency is for this or for that. Gotcha. So that, it makes it a unique approach. You know, every person is different in terms of knowledge. So my knowledge is a lot of, studying about consciousness from different perspectives and combined with frequencies. That's what I do now. I can create programs that work. So how does combining different frequencies, um, how does that affect the way a, a brain interacts with it or the way a particular person interacts with it? Because that's kind of what you're doing. You're kind of merging different frequencies based on what the person that you're treating um, needs or what you feel would best support what it is they're going through. If I want to fall asleep, I'm not going to just listen to the frequency of sleep. No, I start with the high frequency, which is like now I'm awake. And then I will take my brain to the frequency of muscle relaxation. And then to the frequency of increased, uh, maybe like some stuff in my brain so I can start sleeping and so on till I get to the frequency of sleep. So there are different stages, ramps, and different frequencies. And every frequency will have its own time, depending on what I want to create. If I want to create a visual, a meditation with a lot of visuals, I will, for example, take you to through 6.5, so I can figure, and then I take you in a deep state of med meditation. So that meditation, you will see things. It will help you to reprogram yourself. If I want to take you to meditation to ask, to answer questions, I will use something else, which will unlock certain part of your subconscious. So, you know, you start I would imagine or... that your, I would imagine that your uh, master's in computer science uh, helps an awful lot when, when working with this, uh, with this modality. Because it's, no, it's obvious it's if you're a master in computer science, you're, you're very, very analytical and you can yeah. process information. And, and this seems to be, I mean, I, I feel like this would be kind of like right up your alley. And I think it's just so cool that this is what you're doing now. So a few of us, I feel actually do do something that relates to our major in college. And yet what you're doing is, I don't know, it's, it's remotely similar, right? But in terms of, yeah, in terms of computer, there are a lot of similarities between the subconscious, the way you can print it, the way you can design a mental virus and computers because mind viruses exist and they have a very precise way of working. If I want to brainwash someone, 
there are very precise techniques. And it's very similar with computers, but well, for humans, it's more complex, of course, but maybe the basics are the same. That's what I see, how computer viruses work, which are pieces of code, and how you can insert or remove code from someone's brain, which is very difficult, by the way. It's not as easy as a computer. It's not just one click. <laughs> Got it. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you, you put together, you, you, you talk to different clients, and based on their needs, you put together uh, programs, you, you assemble these, these um, different sound therapies, right? And put together programs for them to listen to um, over a period of, is it, you know, weeks, months, or can you tell me a little bit about the service that you actually provide and um, yeah, cause I'd love to be able to get people connected with you. No, it all depends on the depth of the issue because when someone, for example, says, I feel anxious, I have anxiety in my life. Maybe it's so deep that it would take not a few weeks to remove it. You know, uh, the frequencies can go deep. So it depends on what that person wants. If someone wants just to remove the feel better, it's possible to design a program for that. But if someone wanna go deeper and start knowing themselves, because that's also a way to remove anxiety and stress. And that's where I like to work. So I will design a playlist for that. I don't like to give, not placebo, but something that just remove the shallow part of the problem. Okay. So for me, a best client, if someone who wanna, is someone who wanna go like as deep as possible, because I like to see real results. But if someone just wanna something to feel better, Relax. That's also uh, a thing that can be done. It all depends. Actually, I talk with people and I see, okay, what do you want? Do you want just to feel better or you want to? Because it's a journey. Actually, these frequencies can be seen as a key. So I give a key to certain doors and I help people to open them. And then they have to keep working by themselves. By the way, a client for me is not, okay, you get your playlist, bye-bye, I see you in a few weeks. No, I keep asking every day, you know, hey, how are you doing? Are you improving? Anything you would like to share? And based on that, maybe I will remove or add a new track and give also more advice to see that person reaching her, his goal. So we talk about the goal. And when we talk also, you know, I always like to listen between the lines because many times if someone comes and say, hey, look, I have this problem. That's not the problem, actually, you know. Right. Because if that person knew their source of the problem, they wouldn't come and ask me for support. Right. They would fix it themselves. And many times it's a lot of drama of, uh, uh, like, I, usually I don't talk too much with people. I ask very precise questions. I give a playlist and then I ask questions again the next day or the next few days. And based on that, adjustment will be brought. And that's it. We don't need to talk about the past, about when I was a kid, a dog uh, <laughs> tried to kill me or whatever. No, no need to talk about the painful things. We just need to give the right set of frequencies. And if it's supported with uh, a couple of courses I designed, that's much better. Because then people get cognitive skills, which is really important when we want to grow. Understanding how the subconscious work. Because inside that mess of the subconscious, it's like as precise as a computer. You know, it's like very precise. Even if you feel that it's a mess, I don't know what's going on. No, it's really precise. So this technology, it can affect emotion. Is that right? I mean, it can affect a lot of things. Can, can you kind of go through like the, the different, I mean, I guess there's an alpha, beta, theta. There's a couple different general types of brain waves. Um, and then you can refine even further. Can you talk a bit about that? It's starting gamma, beta, alpha, theta, delta, and another one called epsilon. Epsilon is like when people are in a coma state. Hmm. And I have some sessions with that. that. That kind of frequencies is really helpful for the subconscious to reorganize things in a very, very deep way after a period of integration. You know, like, uh, and heal the body. So that epsilon, but not many talk about epsilon. You always find 
gamma, beta, alpha, theta, delta. Right. And, you, don't, uh, you don't function epsilon. very well in epsilon, I don't guess. Yeah, epsilon, man, it's like a it's yeah. like dead, one hertz frequency. I mean, it's like if the brain is not working at all. And uh, so every kind of, every range of frequencies comes with um, its kind of emotions and so on. If you take gamma, gamma is like when you are like, whoa, almost over the place, super excited, a lot of energy, I want to move, maybe I'm stressed. Also, it can happen like in this state. Beta is when you're super focused in something, thinking a lot, solving some kind of problems, or it's also, you find here the frequency of anxiety. And then alpha, alpha is when we learn, memorize, relaxed, and so on. And you keep diving, like then theta, of course I'm resuming it, but you find a lot of, I mean, the benefits, it's just. So if you wanted to, let's say you wanted to study and concentrate and remember, is there a particular sound wave that you can listen to, to help get you to focus and remember the information that maybe you're reading at that time? Yeah, for the focus, we, we can divide it in different kinds of focus. If, I'm, if I have a problem, which is a, a complex problem, I will be using different parts of my brain. If I have to focus because I'm just reading a book and I don't have to do some analytical things in my mind, that would be a different kind of frequency. And if I wanna focus because I'm being creative, that's another kind of frequency. So you can also get into more details. You have different kinds of focus. And for memorization, there are tracks that can be used for meditation or it can be some kind of tracks can be designed just after studying. You listen for 15 or 20 minutes and it helps you remember all that. Oh, wow. And I had a really beautiful feedback. I, had, I, I met a girl, she was studying biochemy, biochemistry, anyways. And her feedback was that after using theta frequencies, she was amazed how she could remember more than ever. And it made her like, you know, it, it made everything so easy for her. And I was pretty impressed by that feedback. I will share it. I got a video from her. Yeah, actually, I should share that. So you can use it also for memory, memory consolidation. So this can help with uh, sleeping and healing and anxiety and depression and I think uh, I heard you mention even like cancer and other serious ailments. This can, it's like serious healing properties. Yeah, look, I never had a cancer. I cannot judge on myself, but family members had, my dad had, and I observed similar patterns. For me, I knew that it was, uh, you know, usually we say, no, it's a cigarette or uh, drinking a lot. Okay, but what about the reason that pushed that person to drink or whatever? And many times there is no cigarette, no nothing, but the person can develop that. I went through a study many years ago about a German doctor who could identify the reason behind every kind of cancer. So if someone has a cancer in a lung cancer, for example, he could see that some rings would appear in the part of the brain responsible for lung control. By the way, he discovered as well that the scanners don't show that. They are set in a way that they will never show the rings appearing. So the doctors cannot make a link between that part of the brain and the lung. So according to him, <clears throat> cancer is when we live, we go through a trauma and we don't express it. Trauma and loneliness, according to him. Of course, when he wrote his book, Finito, No More Career, and uh, it ended for him, but the book is there and a lot of people, I guess, in the world are maybe using this approach. When I was in Bali, we started to do something like that. I was going to work with someone and then, it, well, it didn't happen. But I'm pretty sure that, yeah, it can help, you know. And according to that guy, cancer is not a bad. The cancer is a protection. Without cancer, I would die. If I have a cancer, it means I can live longer. But without the cancer, the person or that creature would die like, much faster. So I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm quite following you. What do you mean by that? So by I having mean, cancer, I, it... Uh, I think I'm not expert, but according to what <clears throat> I learned, that we kill the protection, thinking that oh, that's the danger. 
Yeah, like the the the, the symptoms are often the cure. Um, yeah. Y- yeah, yeah. For example, if you have a runny nose, your nose is running trying to get junk out, and we often take medicine to keep our nose from running when in fact what we need to be doing is yeah, you know, letting the junk get removed from our body um, so i think that it's the same happening with uh with cancer gotcha okay i i, I understand that to a degree I mean, I get what you're saying. so um I, I was listening to another podcast that you did <laughs> i was cheating a little bit um <laughs> No, no, but that's good. It's nice. Thank yeah. you for, for, for listening, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely. So what, what I thought was really interesting is, so not only are we dealing with um, the frequency or the hertz, but you're also dealing with the, the shape of the wave. Um, it could be like a, a square wave or a triangular, triangular wave or um, a sine wave. It could be mono versus stereo, um, different filters, and targets different parts of the brain and create different outcomes. Can, can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, uh, look, I will, I will draw something here. Can I show it to you? Absolutely. Okay, look. So the isochronic tone is a sound that will switch on and off. Okay. In a very fast way. Boop, boop, boop. It goes very fast. Okay. But then for me, with my software, I can play in uh, this. Raise shape. it up just a little bit. Raise it up just a little bit. Yeah. There we go. So okay. I can give a lot of different shapes to this sound. So for example, this one you hear it as a pip, pip. Okay. Pip, pip. Okay. But then I can play with if it's can be also square, gotcha. like what you hear. Mm-hmm. It can be sine, it can be triangle like this one. And I can play with the length of it. I can play with the length of the off section. And I can play how I start here and I, how I end. And there are plenty of things, depending on the part of the brain you, you, you want to trigger, because each part will like some kind of stuff more than the other one, you know. So we spoil the brain and we talk using beautiful words you know something it's like giving flowers to the brain so you take care of it by choosing the right uh you know i'm pretty perfectionist in this one that's why at the end i'm i'm pretty happy with the creations because the feedback is beautiful yeah so So i've done done two of your samples um and i'll tell you the first one was was you know I, I laid down for just a short while. I put my the the uh, head headset on, and you know sometimes I'll have a power nap, like a fifteen minute nap. Um, this this particular sample that you, that you sent my way, I think it was fifty four minutes long, and I laid down for my um, you know my 15, 10 minute lap, nap. Fifty four minutes later, I woke up. I didn't wake up until after the. Um, the sample that you sent me finished playing. And I, I couldn't like an hour later, basically I, I, and this was in the middle of the day. Um, I, I never sleep that long. It just, I just went straight out. It, it was really quite amazing. I felt amazing. I felt uh, refreshed. Uh, it was, it was very different for me. So, and, and what I remember, I remember I woke up when the sound stopped. That's when I woke up. It was just so cool. Um, yeah, I think you're onto something here. <laughs> at the end of that track, when it's for meditation, at the end, we bring you back. It's like in the movie inception. So the frequency will completely switch from very low or that state of trance to another one, which is very fast, bringing you back to the normal state. But of course, you will be kind of feeling very good, but you will come back. You will wake up. I see. So there is a big change in the last five minutes. It goes up in five minutes, so you can come back and have a normal life. Right, right. <laughs> oh, I, I like your mention about emotion and beliefs are linked. So that even if you're able to uh, re- re- remove like trauma to an issue or emotion to a particular issue, 
that if your belief is still there that it should occur, you need to try and and rid yourself of that belief. It's kind of like a two-part process oftentimes when when dealing with trauma. Um, Can you speak on that a little bit? The outside is not the problem, but the way I look at the outside. And what I noticed in my research is that the more, the, the closer I get to a kind of rational thinking system, you understand? Wait, there are rules here to understand if it's, the closer I get to some kind of objective way of thinking, the less problems I have with the world and the more I'm aligned with my emotions because we are emotional and rational beings. So we should not like, okay, I'm just feeling and everything is about feelings. No, it's, so if you can kind of step outside of, um, of your emotion, like uh, yeah. see the situation from the outside versus being surrounded and being a part and encompassed by the emotion itself, being able to step outside of that. But for some emotions, so this is for most of our emotions. They are fed by our system of thinking, our system of belief. Mm -hmm. The more rational system my system is, the better I will be in my life because I, you know, I not like behave in a reactive mode. I take control. And, but for some emotions, I noticed for some trauma, if it happens when we are like uh, maybe less than five years old, when the language is not well developed, it can be difficult to remove them because some emotions don't have that, don't have that uh, intellectual side. You know, the, kid, the kids don't have any form of philosophy in mind. They are kids, they, they don't know what is moral or not moral. So for some emotions, it can be more, more difficult if they go back in time to where we, when we couldn't like express, explain things properly. So can this technology actually help with emotions and help allow you to be able to step outside of a, a emotional state? Yeah, what happens, uh, the feedback I always get is people say like this, before I reacted last time, I, um, I had more time before reaction, you know? So when they start using like data frequencies, deep data frequencies, which are meditation sessions, uh, the time between feeling and reacting increases. So people can l- look at things from above and it becomes more easy for them, easier for them to detach from, from that emotion. It happens automatically. They don't need to think about it. We, we, we switch to a mode of looking more than just, okay, I take action, I take action. So that's one of the side effects of this technology. And it's good because it doesn't require from the user to read books and spend maybe years thinking that, you know, it's not that easy without the right tools. Introspection is a very, is a tough thing. It's a difficult thing. We are very complex beings. So, so I wanted something that I kind of came across and, and I wanted to mention it just, just to kind of, um, express how potent of a technology this is when, when if this is applied properly or in a particular way it can um, promote like hallucinations there's um, a version of this that you know I heard the word uh, digital uh, digital weed or digital is it opium is that is that what you had mentioned digital yeah. opium um, yeah. And I mean, that, that, that's very interesting. I mean, I guess it has such a strong result that it can influence the brain to such a degree that you can actually hallucinate as a result of this type of technology. Yeah, the last feedback I got was from a lady. She used the track three times in a row and she ended having hallucinations. I didn't like that when she shared with me her experience. I said, come on, you. That's not why you got the tracks from me. So (laughs) she was tripping and she was happy. I look what's happening. But yeah, you can create amazing experiences with this technology. But I'm going to tell you one thing about drugs. I took drugs for more than 10 years of my life. You You took what? Oh, drugs. Drugs. Okay. Yes. I know about a lot of different kinds of trips. I will, you know, in my list, I tried more than 20 something different things, maybe 30 different drugs and 
So it was part, it, it was a lifestyle looking for the trip. What happened today, well, when I left to Thailand, I decided to stop everything and change my life in something much better and to start to create, to create. I wanted to be a creator and I switched to that mindset. Um, but the point what's happened with meditation is that with these frequencies, you get to the best trip, which is being aligned with myself. Meaning that now that I'm using this and others around me, you know, we, you, you simply, you're happy because life is already very weird process. You know, everything around with these meditations the, and the detachment that's happened, I don't feel a prisoner in this world, but more like someone who's visiting an amazing planet. The day I die, I don't know what will happen. Okay, I'm not going to go get the answer for, from someone and say, oh, okay, I don't know. The day I die, I will know what happens. Right. But in here, in this life, uh, it's pure magic. And we have much more control than we, what we can think. This is my conclusion, especially this year, that we have special powers, every single person, even the one who's lost in the street with nothing. But we have just to bring back that, all of that. It's really amazing to be here. And no one should be here, actually. In terms of statistics, the number is like, it's zero. The chances for us to be alive here are zero point followed by more than 60 zeros, one. I mean, this is, this. can you imagine? Zero point zero zero zero, more than 60 numbers. That's my chances, your chances, our chance to be here alive. But why don't we see that? Why are we zombified? That's another subject. But frequencies can help to get to this state where we feel timeless. At the beginning, you know, I struggled with the state I'm, I reached recently, which was that sometimes I just can see how the time is an illusion. It's a samadhi state actually for people used to meditation. It's time, you freeze the time and you can see the future and the present everything here on the plate. And it's weird because as humans, sooner or later we disappear, the body is not following yet. Maybe someday with technology. But it's pretty impressive to see how we have much more control than what we can think. That's what we believe. Why? There are many reasons why we got to this point. But we are amazing. And we should like live life fully with what we have. If I have one I make the most of it. If I have a thousand of things, I will make the most of them. We have to learn that because otherwise it's just wasting something of unbelievable beauty. Well, I, I feel like you're, you are certainly making the most of this world. It's, uh, you've gone through a lot of challenges. And, um, and I would like to talk to you briefly about um, your, the world records that you, you um, achieved with your boat. I mean, with your the laser. Um, so, I mean, that, that in itself is an indicator that you are someone that, that goes after their dreams. You know, you, you are a, a passionate, intense person. And the fact that you are now on this, um, this path to help people out is, is absolutely just, you know, again, thank you so much for doing that. I have a good friend of mine that actually has been in touch with you. She's the one that referred me to you because she's like, this, this, is amazing technology is doing a whole lot for me. You need to reach out to this person and interview them so other people can get in touch with them. Thank you to her, by the way, for bringing us together. Merci. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> um, but you had described earlier about the 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 you know the um, challenges you went through with on this little boat it's uh what is the laser is what 12 feet long is it was it a laser too or like the original laser that uh that you achieved yeah, the, four, the, four meters one. the one they use in olympic games the one okay. person one sail and yep. die with it yes yeah, so, so i've had mine for well i i bought it used when i was at fourth grade um when i'd come from from school uh, in fourth grade, I would go out in the middle of the channel and sail around for, for hours just by myself. And here you are setting world records by crossing the Mediterranean Sea. I, that's awesome. Good for you, man. 
Uh, well, it seems to me out. that you live your life to the fullest. Um, I do my best. I do my best to live to the fullest. And it's just that life is just magic. You know, as soon as we realize that we have been, the damage we got from education, in my opinion, is really big. You know, we lost all that. Wow, this is amazing. Look at the kids when they see the rain for the first time. They get crazy. For us humans, when it rains, oh shit, I had to go to work. Okay, rain is life. So when we get to points like that, it means that something is deeply wrong in what we do. Right. So that's how it happened with sailing. It was a personal challenge. It became a world record. And then I went for the second one and now the third one. Because through that also you can grow. Not only personally, talking, but the way we communicate, sending emails, looking for financement and so on. So a lot of things to learn from that. And once you engage in it, it becomes a habit to face fears. So people should push themselves. Sometimes it's good to use a bit of force, just push themselves to learn from their, that fear is not that bad. Dealing with fear in the right way can be really good in life. You know, fear is not there to block me. Fear says something. I mean, I listen to my fear. If it's okay, if it's something real, I will listen properly. If it's not real, I will just remove it. So also I, I learned how to deal with my fears. Fear I, I think it's very healthy to step out of your comfort zone, step out of your comfort level, you know, um, and step into fear. I think that allows you to grow as a person. For sure. I think fear can be a choice. That was my conclusion in one of my challenges, sailing. I was sailing in the Gulf of Thailand. A lot of, you know, they have a lot of pirate boats there. Not pirates, like illegal fishing boats, fishing nets. I found uh, there, were, there, there was a shark attack before my challenge. I was alone. And uh, a lot of storms all around me. And that day, I almost crashed with three fishing boats in one night. Because I, I couldn't see further the two and two meters away from my boat. And uh, that night I said, okay, so anytime it can happen that I will hit the boat and kill maybe myself or whatever. Uh, so you know what? That's when I learned how to make the fear a choice. I said, look, I'm choosing now to not be scared because fear is not going to save me. So that's something anyone can do. Love it. If my fear says something, it's okay. Why should I be scared all the time? I let my fear talk for one minute. Ah, okay, there is a danger of dying. Thank you. Okay, I don't need you anymore. So this is about training it. Instead of being victim of the fear, I wake up in the morning with paranoia and, oh, the world is going to collapse. No, I listen and then I choose to follow or not. So that was the first time I learned that fear also can be a choice. <laughs> we shouldn't be scared all the time. I should be scared maybe a few seconds, listen. If it serves me, it's good. doesn't serve me, bye-bye. And that's it. That's what I learned that night. Wow. But I got scared, man. Yeah. You know, surfing six feet waves and you don't see more than two meters from you. That was the craziest experience I had in terms of sailing, uh, night sailing. And the danger with the first challenge was different. The first challenge, I was in the Andaman Sea. So I got lightning, lightning all around. Oh. So for me in that situation, I said, okay, at least if I die now, I will be transformed in ashes. So my, I will not feel any <laughs> and my, my mind was with feeling pain. I said, it's okay. You will not, not even see it coming. doesn't matter. It's 50,000 volts. You will just burn ashes. No worries. No pain. And that's also when I learned how to live the moment, knowing that the next one can be the last one or that that one can be the last one. So leave the present choose the fear. Uh, the, I mean, fear can be a choice, you know, different things. And we combine them together and life becomes like magic. And fear is a big blockage. Consciousness doesn't like fear. As soon as we have fear and we lose faith in life, that's it, we get lost. We get lost and we... There is a difference between living and being alive. And if someone likes to walk, you know, anyone can do that. Huh? Okay, anyone can buy a little bag, put some food. Okay, I want to hike for one week. It doesn't matter when I'm going to sleep. People should do things like that. It's not only like, okay, we need a huge amount of money. No, we need just to do it. And that's where we connect with ourselves more and more. Nature is important. You know, recently, Lauren, 
I went to surf, for a surf trip. I told you about it. I had nothing. I had a candle, fish cans, and oats for a few days. I could see the whole universe and life in just a flower playing with the wind, dancing with the wind. A kind of thing that we, we don't appreciate anymore. And I found it more beautiful than any Hollywoodian movie or meeting or party. Just the flower dancing with the wind. You can see the time passing. You can see the universe talking in there. I mean, just that simple frame, a flower dancing with the wind. So it's nice to be amazed by life. Everything changes. And of course, change the attraction. It, it becomes much easier to attract things. You don't need to run for them. You ask for them to come to you. It's like in the movie Transurfing. You know, the, not the movie, the book. The guy explains how uh, we can attract things, but in here you can see that. Some meditations is just impressive. You ask for something, you remove the fear that will limit me from getting it, and it will come. You know, we live in a net. Of, consciousness is like a net. You can create events in, from the future and ask them to become reality. So there are meditations also for that. It can be used also in that way. Very nice. Well, this is uh, this has really been fantastic. Um, is there... Anything else that you wanted to mention before we wrap this up? Yes. Uh, I would like to mention that it's important in life to test. You know, we look for happiness. So what about this test? I tried different philosophical systems. I will give you an example. This is, I think, very important to, to mention here is that I tried to be, I studied Christians. I studied Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism. Uh, Marxism, I studied the philosophy of Plato, the philosophy of blah, 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 you know, a lot of guys. <laughs> yeah. well, every time you study something, it's like if I'm running the software, I'm going to follow certain instructions coming from that philosophy in right. order to deal with life. So what I ask people, if, if someone feels not okay in life, that something is missing, they can change for another philosophical system and see if it works. It's like a computer. If I work with Windows and it's full of viruses, I can switch to something else. So we can do that. So we have to experiment in life. No one came and said, okay, this is the answer. You can just believe me blindly. It doesn't work like that. So I encourage people to test different approaches. In my opinion, what works very well for me is when I switch to this philosophy called objectivism. So it gave me some really cool tools to love more myself and deal in a much better way with the world. So that's what I'm trying now. Well, the advice is, guys, test different things. Don't be stuck. If you feel that you are stuck, it's maybe and probably because your philosophical system needs improvement or just to switch to another one. And that happiness is possible. That state we imagine, or maybe we cannot imagine when we don't get it, exists. A state of permanent amazement exists. And it's sad to see that so many lives are wasted. So guys, test different things. Beauty and happiness is waiting for you. That's your true nature. Just take action. Take action and test in life. And don't be scared to get hurt. Get hurt, man. Come on. Jump from the cliff. Get hurt. Your bones will get stronger. And then you will start to enjoy the pain. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been awesome. It really has. Yes.